He said that, she cried. He did that. Oh, she turned away and through the slender clustering trunks of the bordering orange trees, she looked out across the glittering waters of the great harbor to the distant hills. Thus for a little while, my Lord standing stiffly, fearfully waiting for fuller revelation of her mind, at last it came slowly, deliberately in a voice that at moments was half suff suffocated. Last night, when my uncle displayed his rancor and his evil rage, it began to be borne in upon me that such vindictiveness can only belong to those who have wrong been wronged. It is who have, who have wronged. It is the frenzy into which men whip themselves to justify an evil passion. I must have known then, if I had not already learnt it, that I had been too credulous of all the unspeakable things attributed to Peter Blood. Yesterday I had his own explanation of that tale of Levasseur that you heard in St. Nicholas. And now this, this, but gives me confirmation of his truth and worth. To a scoundrel such as I was too readily brought to believe him, an act, the act of which you have just told me, would have been impossible. That is my own opinion, said his lordship gently. It must be, but even if it were not, that would now weigh, weigh for nothing. What weighs, oh, so heavily and bitterly, bitterly, is the thought that, but for the words in which yesterday I repelled him, he might have been saved, if only I could have spoken to him again before he went. I waited for him, but my uncle was with him, and I had no suspicion that he was going away again. And now he is lost, back at his outlawry and piracy, in which ultimately he will be taken and destroyed, and the fault is mine, mine. What are you saying? The only agents were your uncle's hostility and his own obstinacy, which could, which would not study compromise. You must not blame yourself for anything. She swung to him with some impatience, her eyes a swim in tears. You can say that, in spite of his message, which it in itself tells how much I was to blame. It was my treatment of him, the epithets I cast at him, that drove him. So much he has told you, I know it to be true. You have no cause for shame, said he. As for your sorrow, why, it will afford you solace. It, you may still count on me to do what man can to rescue him from this position. She caught her breath. You will do that? She cried with sudden eager hopefulness. You promise? She held out her hand to him impulsively. He took it in both his own. I promise, he answered her, and then, remaining still, re retaining still the hand she had surrendered to him, Arabella, he said very gently, there is still this other matter upon which you have not answered me. This other matter? Was he mad? she wondered. Could any other matter signify in such a moment? This matter concerned that concerns myself, and all my future, oh, so very closely. This thing that blood believed, th that prompted him, that, that you are not indifferent to me. He saw the fair face change color and grow troubled once more. Indifferent to you? She said, why, no, we have been good friends. We shall continue so, I hope, my lord. Friends? Good friends? He was between dismay and bitterness. It is not your friendship only that I ask, Arabella. You heard what I said, what I reported. Will you not say that Peter Blood was wrong? Gently, she sought to disengage her hand, the trouble in her face increasing. A moment he resisted, then, realizing what he did, he set her free. Arabella, he cried on a note of sudden pain. I have friendship for you, my lord, but only friendship. His castle of hopes came clattering down about him, leaving him a little stunned. As he had said, he was no coxcomb, yet there was something that he did not understand. She confessed to a friendship, and it was in his power to offer her a great position, one to which she, a colonial planter's niece, however wealthy, could never have aspired, even in her dreams. This she rejected, yet spoke of friendship. Peter Blood had been mistaken then. How far had he been mistaken? Had he been as mistaken in her feelings towards himself as he obviously was in her feelings towards his lord lordship? In that case, his reflection broke short. To speculate was to wound himself in vain. He must know. Therefore, he asked her with a grim frankness, Is it Peter Blood? Peter Blood, she echoed. At first, she did not understand the purport of his question. When understanding came, a flush suffused her face. I... 
do not know, she said, faltering a little. This was hardly a truthful answer, for, as if an obscuring veil had suddenly been rent that morning, she was permitted to see at last, to see Peter Blood's in his true relation to other men, and that sight, vouchsafed her twenty-four hours too late, filled her with pity and regret and yearning.